This is off planet radio. Hey everybody, welcome to Off Planet Radio. Um, gosh, I wish sometimes we recorded the uh, pre-rolls to these shows because they're sometimes some of the best material that we do. It is Off Planet Radio. It is December 2017. We'll date ourselves in time here because time isn't real. And uh, well, it's kind of a watermark on things. Uh, very excited show. Yeah, very excited show. Very excited about the show and our guest tonight. Uh, I'll which I'm, I'm pre-introducing for Emily. This is the pre-introduction. So just so everybody understands that, um, we, do, we do pre-introduce the show. There's a couple of, there's a couple of things we've got to say. First off, it is late in the year. And as 2017 fades, there's a page getting turned here. A very strong sense that I've been getting for a number of months. And as we get closer to this nexus point of 2018, we're entering into the next level of this thing. 2018, in my vision, is a major year for shifts, changes, and I would dare say as well, probably some exposures as well that are going to be rather interesting to watch. We're in the portal to 2020 now, and uh, that's meaningful in the way things are going to roll out. But you know what? The way it rolls out, is completely up to us because we're generating the time field. So hang in there. Um, we got a few more shows coming this year. Emily and I are going to do a time capsule show that you'll have. And um, this show is brought to you by patrons. You can find us at um, patreon.com slash off planet media. And if you'd like to know more about what that is, Go over there and have a look and see if it works for you. You support us and we continue to produce content. Em, welcome. Good Thank evening. Thank you. Good to be back. Good to My be back. My esteemed colleague on the <laughs> West Coast. I don't and, know how uh, esteemed, but. <laughs> so I've introed the intro. Now you do the intro. All righty. Okay, guys. So let's get right to it. Um, this is another one that's probably really long overdue. So. Real no overdue. Like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Our guest is well known for her unique insights on the actual workings, both physical and metaphysical, of this reality. Her work bridges the gap between science and spirituality in a simplified format that addresses the programming beliefs and concepts by which we have lived our lives, both individually and collectively. In her own words, recognizing our spiritual and perceptual boundaries and comfort zones is a major factor in our quest for answers. In general, we are unaware of what we don't know, and the distance widens even farther when we are fixed behind a barrier of limiting beliefs. Reality is a great science that has no boundaries, only those that we create for our comfort. There is no right or wrong way to grow, but it can be of tremendous assistance in recognizing the limitations which hold us bound. She is the author of The Holographic Canvas, The Fusing of Mind and Matter, as well as several other tit titles, and the creator of the award-winning documentary, The Business of Disease. We are really excited for this one because with the breadth of her knowledge, this conversation could go anywhere, and I hope it does. Sonia Barrett, welcome to Off Planet Radio. Well, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. So Welcome. here we are. Welcome. This is yeah. awesome. Thank you. I, yeah. I, was, sh I was sharing with Emily uh, in the, the mount up to the pre-roll that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that uh, I had gone back and listened to your interview, your first interview on Red Ice with Henrik, which I think was probably back in 2008 or 2009. Oh, wow. And, oh wow. uh, that was a while back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, I, you know, I was struck that was right when you released the book and how cutting edge you were at that time. That, you, that was kind of material that I was gleaning from myself. I was still in another venue at that point in time. So we sort of consider you to be the forerunner that has paved the way for people like us to come up and continue doing the things that you do. Great stuff. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, it is kind of interesting, yes, <laughs> because when I first came out, it was, um, 
I was def it, it definitely seemed like I was just completely off the off the charts off the wall because people weren't talking about a lot of what I was speaking about then but now it's interesting to see that um, you know I was talking about technology from a completely different standpoint and so here here we are now um, talking about you know reality as, as or universe as a simulation just mm -hmm. things that people were not hearing you know everything is made up of data um, just so much and it's like here we are. So I have people call me or, or email me and say that, like, wow, yeah. this is stuff you were talking about, like, way back when. And here yep. it is. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Major yeah. stuff. This stuff's important now because the, the consciousness wave is catching up very quickly. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I've said this a number of times that um, I'm seeing the man in the street now begin to see the glimmers of what we're talking about. It's like there's wrinkles in the, in the space time continuum and they're kind of every once in a while glitching out and people are going, Oh, that's interesting. And so we're, we're, we're kind of in this consciousness wave, which is not just, you know, and I've heard you address this. It's not to say that this is an ascension thing. This is not like mass wake up or, but it is a consciousness wave. It is an right. uptick. In, in the continuum of, of human consciousness, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. Um, basically, I, what you're saying is there is something about this particular time, this particular period, and uh, whether it, everybody is, jumps on board and is awakening or not, it doesn't mean that that it's like a portal. It's, it doesn't mean that this, it's not open right now. So it is, it is open. There is something about this particular uh, moment in time on the, this whole time stream. And uh, it is up to the individual, um, depending on what the course of their journey is, I think why they're here. Uh, it's up to the individual uh, in terms of how curious they are, um, how much, you know, how much knowledge they're open to, how um, can, can they widen their perception. Uh, if we're stuck in our limited views, uh, our comfortable, I like to say comfortable interpretations about reality, because certainly I think most people like something comfortable because they can sink their teeth into it. Um, then, you know, if, if that's where you're going to stay, then, then that's where you're going to stay. But this is an opportunity to almost like ride this wave um, that I think energetically is, is helping anybody who is open like that to see, to see more of what really already uh, is. So it's not like we're creating anything new, but it's like filters come off and you're able to, to see more of what already is potentialities yeah let me ask um, you this do you still have the sense that first off do you have a sense of mission about what you're doing and do you have the sense of destiny in that mission that somehow or another you're now walking in what you carved out for yourself to do in this particular time frame epoch whatever Ah, oh, that's always an interesting one because, um, uh, it, you know, it's so interesting that it's, it's, it's kind of a tough one <laughs> to, to answer because in one sense, it would seem like I've come here, as they say, with a mission and, um, and I, I've come, I came into this planet in a very interestingly aware, aware state and much of what I understand uh, I'm able to see not everybody is able to maybe hone in on that so it's like is that my destiny or um, you know or is it that I am just so super over the top curious that I have pushed past uh, any boundaries that could be there so that's why it's kind of like it, it, you know what I mean it's kind yeah. of Interesting. And, you know, and years ago, um, actually it was the year 2000. Uh, I had, I've never been to an astrologer before. And a friend of mine took me for my birthday. Actually, actually, you know, Jordan Maxwell. Yeah. 
actually Jordan, because I've known Jordan since the 90s. Actually, it was Jordan that said, you know, you want to go, I'm going to go, you know, he know, knew this guy, Louis Turi at the time. And, and so that's how I ended up going. Anyway, cut a long story short, what there was something that he said that I didn't understand until later on. And when he looked at my charts, because uh, he was able to determine, he, he didn't really need the exact time I was born, because I don't know other than I was born early in the um, morning. He said, you're what we call, what is called a terminal. I said, what is that? He mm. says, it means you have no fate. Your fate is your own. Um, mm. and, wow. Yeah. And so, but see, at the time, I didn't really... I thought, yeah. okay, interesting. But then as the years, which was 17 years, as the years have gone by on, I understand it more now because this game is, it's incredible. It's not, a lot of it is not what people think. However, it is because that's where you are. This is how interesting this, this um, interpretation of reality can be. Wherever we are, that's sort of what we hone in on and reality will sort of show itself to you from mm -hmm. your perception, based on your perception. Uh, but then, however, I see beyond that. I, I understand now beyond that. I see beyond that. Um, and so I see where I'm not locked in. I also realize that there is truly a default program. There is a, a default format that, um, that runs everything. And by that, I mean that when beings are not um, at a level of awareness to navigate themselves, sort of, I guess, in a way what, what he was explaining, but they're not able to navigate themselves or step outside of um, that, a certain, that limited perception about reality and what reality can be. Then that default program sort of regulates everything about the majority of the collective it it regulates your whole cycle of from from birth to death it you're on it you're it's like you're networked into this into a system and um and that's what it does and that's why when people do um readings like astrology people get their charts done those charts work according to where you are after you after you get your go beyond that default structure, the chart has nothing to do with you anymore. But the chart is a navigation system. It's like a roadmap. It's a map um, that that is sort of guiding you according to the time that you've come in on the planet and the energies at the time and all of that. If you choose to stay on this this sort of um, preset structure system then that works for you. But if you figure it out and you start understanding more about this amazing <laughs> computer program, then you, you actually, your brain, you start to just completely go off the default system. Does that all make sense? Yeah. And yeah. you're not run by the default program. Yeah, and you actually anymore. did it. You actually kind of answered the question the way I posed it to you in that the sense of destiny um and it was very interesting in saying that that there comes a point where i think people decide they're either going to fold and stay in the default program or they're going to rise out of that which is painful right yeah right uh, you and, know yeah. I mean, i've had and you probably have too mm -hmm. people say look why don't you just get back with the matrix program why don't you just give this up and yet you know i know emily knows that we're we're compelled to do this this is coming from something inside of us that's been unleashed and it's, it's part of the game absolutely yeah, yeah. That, that, it's almost that, like a compulsion it is it is it, it's a compulsion some have more of that compulsion than others and um and that is that that is the game you know so some people used to go why do you call it a game but more, more people are are now emailing me and i go oh, okay now i start to understand why you're calling it a game but in this human game experience that is um that is a, a part of it is to experience 
all that's possible, all the potentialities for a human being. You and I might mm -hmm. not necessarily experience all yeah. those potentials, but somebody will. Uh, and then we have the opportunity to also push the envelope beyond the what I call the standard human program, that default program. And that that is what we do. We push beyond that. That is truly the objective is to transcend the game construct as it as it appears to be at this time, uh, as we have been wired into it. And it's just like any any game. There's there's that objective for you to beat the game. And to some degree, that's what we're doing. We're beating uh, a certain level of this human game and just basically just transcending into more a more expansive um, level of experiencing then so it's not like escaping which people tend to want to say that how do i escape this matrix that in itself just loops you back in the fact that you think you're needing to escape loops you back in because that means that you're running away you haven't mastered anything you are actually trying to run away from something because you don't understand you don't understand how this works. So people just keep getting looped back into the same thing. So I would say it's it's not about escaping. Uh, it really is about mastering this, um, this game experience. And we have to understand that the reason why it's so challenging is because we're running off of um, a series of programs that are really, 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 oh, they've been there for a long time. And, and those programs are there who run automatically um, to uphold or to hold the human being in that, that particular level of the game. Or we, we can say our subconscious mind, that's part of what we identify. Because we collect data. We collect data, um, the collective human information, collective uh, collect data from what, millions, thousands, however many years, along with our own personal data that we um, are collecting and that information is like a library of information that we draw from draw from to um, to assess to solve problems to make choices it's all coming from these sort of preset information that's what everybody is pulling from so you can see why it could be so challenging because it, it, this whole system is based on survival this body is designed to survive and the subconscious mind is part of that survival system. And so um, you, you're, you're, it does everything possible to survive, to stay alive, to keep you alive. So now those are the programs that it's running. It's running those programs until that part of you that is more expansive somehow manages to, <laughs> like, a, like a bull, you know, riding a bull, be able to come back in and be the prominent um, source, the, the prominent uh, leader then in moving, moving everything, the body and everything uh, forward. So I want to go back just a minute because I know that while there's going to be a lot of our listeners that are familiar with you, there's probably just as many or more that maybe aren't super familiar. And they're with going, you. what? No, they're, they're not because we we go. We, it's, it's called. This is off planet radio. We go pretty 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 far out right here, even though we're not sure that there is any off planet anymore. <laughs> um, can you, you know, so you're sitting here describing the game and whatever. Can you tell people a little bit about yourself and your path? What brought you to understanding that we are in a game and that you are sort of the lead player in in, in, in sort of creating your game as you go? You know what I mean? Can you tell yeah. us a little bit about yourself? Um. Well, let's see. I. I have to say, okay, I came into this experience to my best of my memory, um, very curious. So as a child, I was always a little bit different anyway. So <laughs> and I was always, I was always very curious and just things didn't really add up for me, even though I came, you know, we went to church, I came from church background. I love going to church, um, but I think I was more entertained by it. Um, <laughs> it is pretty funny if you think about it, right? <laughs> I was more entertained, you know, and I, lo I loved the whole thing, the singing, the looking, you know, going through my Bible, and I loved it, but things just didn't add up for me. I used to wonder, you know, who is God and, and how did this 
would whoever it is get to get that position <laughs> i did and i was like i want to do that <laughs> so so anyway so um so that that was kind of how I was thinking all along. And, and as, as I got to be a teenager, I started dabbling in, um, you know, Edgar Casey stuff. I love mysteries. I love sci-fi. Um, I loved all of that stuff. So then I, I started to, uh, I think I started having some experiences and I kind of freaked myself out a little bit. Um, and then I kind of backed away a little bit in order to go through, you know, the life stuff, you know, the, eh, I think I'm in love. Oh, I got my heart, you know, broken. <laughs> you know, all that human stuff. I have Narrow. no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, you're such a saint. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, the whole thing, have children. Okay, so moving forward. So in 1992, after I um, left my marriage uh, with my two sons, I, it was such a hor horrific experience that I had gone through in this marriage that I really was asking the question, okay, what is this thing we call life? I, I really had to figure this out. I'm going, okay, what the fuck what? is this shit? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 14 years, why? And what is this? So that's really how it started. And I, so I really set out to do this and I didn't, I didn't take any workshops. I didn't even know any meta, I didn't even know the word metaphysics. So I had no idea any of this stuff existed or um, from that perspective. However, I did read Shirley MacLaine's Out on a Limb, and Dancing with the Light, Dancing yeah. in the Light. And, um, I read Masters of the Far East, uh, and then I and then I set everything down, and I thought, okay, I'm done. I'm not going to read anything else. So I taught myself how to meditate because I didn't know how to meditate, and um, and that was really my big breakthrough was that experience and my determination, and I really felt that there was a way for me to penetrate a veil um, that was beyond what I thought I was seeing and experiences experiencing, that was really my feeling that I could, there was a way to do this. And that was really what I set out to do. And then, you know, one glorious day, uh, doing my meditation, um, I, I had this incredible experience that became, I became like a child in the candy store. And, um, and, and that whole sense of this, you know, energy, uh, for lack of a better word of explaining it, moving through me and my hands are moving and I'm like, just like feeling like I'm full of this experience. But see, at the time, I didn't really clearly understand it. And of course, years later, I understand a little bit more as to what was going on. And that was more vi um, vibrational because your body can only contain so much of a uh, particular, you know, frequency. It just wasn't, my body just wasn't ready for where my mind was going, where I was going. Um, and my, it was just all consuming. Some people would want to put it more in a very mystical, you know, ooh, experience. But I, I started to understand the science of really what happened. So that's kind of what I do. I just, I get rid of <laughs> mysticism. And I think for some people, it, it kind of kills the party. I want to see, I want to understand what is going on. So I don't like to hide it in packaged things that just sound good and feel good. I just want to nail it. So that, that was my beginning. And I started writing um, what I was starting to understand and what was coming to me. And I would, I had gotten to a point where I could go lay down. Um, I could go lay on my back and ask, you know, have a question or want to understand something. And um, I would just be go in this space, and I, I guess it's probably called it. Maybe it's the hypogogonic state, which is that in between. Mm -hmm. And I understand later that Einstein was doing the same thing. I had no idea, but I had started to experience this. So I would go, and I you're awake, but you're in between, and and then I started to understand, and and I would write down this information, and I just started to trust myself. And it would, a lot of what I would write, not having taken physics or, you know, anything before, I would write the stuff. And as time would go on, there are things that would pop up to confirm that I, what I was writing was on point, what I was understanding. So this is kind of how it happens now. 
same thing. I'll, I'll talk about things and then, you know, scientists will come up and talk about it. And I'm like, okay, I talked about that like two years ago, <laughs> you know? So, and I, and so I tell people now that that is a birthright that we have. We don't have to wait on science. We don't have to wait on you know, any scientist. We don't have to wait on anybody. It's all accessible to all of us. Um, that's what I learned because everything is made up of information. It's just data streams, streams of information. It's a matter of um, understanding that you can tap into and access lots of different things at any moment. And I hope that kind of yeah, very good. Up. Yeah, I know that, that that was very good. Well, I think uh, the I think the mystic and the scientist need each other. Oh, you know, absolutely. I, and, and, and I agree. I, I saw that. I saw the blurb from Amaka Swami. And that's a good example of somebody who is building bridges between the world of empirical science, quantum science, and then the mystical aspects. I mean, I love the woo. I'm all about the woo. But I'm still an analyst and and I'm trained as an analyst. So there's a part of me that sits there and beholds the woo and then go, now I want to know how the woo works and how do I practically figure out how the woo works Absolutely. and what's inside the woo? Yeah. Is there Absolutely. gel in there or, you know, what, what's up with the woo? Because, right. and, and I, I thought it was refreshing that you didn't, you didn't dispel the science in favor of the mysticism. You sort of embraced it as a way to get to information that was relatively neutral in terms of where it came from and then get a verification. Right. Is, that's it. Yeah. That's, that's kind the, of what that's, I do. I, that's the best way. I mean, I, that's, mm-hmm. I, I like it best when it's like that. I don't like to go out like fishing for stuff. I like when I have a thought or an idea. And it is funny though, sometimes how not long after you have the thought or the idea or what the experience or whatever, the confirmation comes and you wonder right. would it have come if I hadn't had the experience with that. Right. Information have even been well, there? that's the synchronicity that starts yeah. to kick in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because everything is just, you know, it's like radio waves. I mean, every everything is sort of out there and um, it just all kind of, you know, connects or comes together because uh, you already you already uh, created the opening for for a uh, like frequency, you know, mm-hmm. to align with what, what your thought is. But yes, um, Amit was... Um, yeah, he was really awesome. You know, I did a... <laughs> I had the opportunity to do a panel at the ICM conference a few years ago um, with, <laughs> with the only non-scientist with Bruce Lipton. So I'm on this panel with Bruce Lipton, Amit Guazami, mm-hmm. uh, J- J- Dr. Jacob Lieberman. And um, there was a doctor actually that was um, the moderator. And so it was quite interesting because I w- the questions that would be asked I would give, you know, solid explanation and understanding. And even in my talk, that was that aligned anyway with what they were saying. So I would answer it first and then they would say the same thing, uh, you know, with with the science. And so Amit was in the audience and I didn't realize at the time that he was in the audience hearing my lecture. And so that was what was so interesting. So yeah. I wasn't even in his his talk when somebody came back and said to me, you know, um, Dr. Guazami just mentioned you that of all the talks that he's heard today, Sonia Barrett, you know, and da 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 da, and yeah, yeah. that he was a true mystic. And so anyway, so I talked to him. He's like, no, he goes, use the blurb because that is, it is so true. So I was able to describe a, a, a lot of things, and I think I must have talked about the Big Bang a little bit. Just things that scientifically, um, they would know it, but then I was able to explain it. So, so it, how, <laughs> I'm sorry, did I, did I, did no, I step no, on you? It is funny how sometimes, like, those of us who seemingly don't have any scientific or chop, it wouldn't <laughs> seem like we'd be the one to explain it, are able to put mm-hmm. things into plain English in a way that people can understand something that right. they don't have any interest in. Well, that's kind of been my issue with science is the arcane use of terminology, um, reliance on mathematical formulas, and, and, a, and a language structure that's outside the, the language of common people. 
And, yeah. you know, to go and read a scientific paper, which I do on a pretty regular basis, um, in any discipline, you, you find that you're, you're in a minefield of language where you hear I, a lot of times even now reading things in my own trade, which is largely technology and material science, mm -hmm. I have to stop and go look words up because I don't know the application right. of them in, in a very specialized way. Exactly. So, you know, bridging that is no small feat because the concepts need to be communicated. It serves no purpose to keep things locked up in, in these, these silos where technocrats and scientists talk to each other, but the, the average person has no idea what this means or how it applies to them. That's part of, in a way, this elitism, I think, because yeah. we are, uh, as humans, uh, we are about competition. We are competitive. We are about um, categorizing. We are about, um, what's the word, different, uh, different levels, you know? Yeah. Um, stratifying, stratifying. Exactly. Yeah, we, that's, what, that's what we're about. And so not to have everybody the same. They don't want to be the same. So they need to, you know, they need to, to, um, to be here Otherwise, how do they account for all the money that was spent on schooling? <laughs> you got to be able to say, okay, but yeah, but I think that's it. And there's also this sense, not all of them, but I think there's also this sense um, where when people they just want to be a part of this energy. They don't understand it. I've seen that. They don't understand it. But to say that they were there. You know, right. and to feel like yeah. they're a part of some, you know, upper whatever echelon of people who were part of this. Oh, yeah, I saw him speak. Did you understand anything that the person was saying? <laughs> so that that is what I would see. And that that used to kind of bug me. But but it is the story and it is the game. Um, I think scientists are wonderful. I love them because they do. They come and they validate what maybe I'm saying or what you're saying, but at the same time, I realize that they operate in a box. They operate based on formulas and they, their job is to force everything to mm -hmm. fit into the formula that they were taught. Um, and if it doesn't fit in there, then there's, it's not right. There's something wrong with it. And they will do that to even their, their colleagues, you know, they'll shut them down. Um, um, because yeah. no, that can't be correct. And then it takes another 50 years before somebody finally is confident in themselves enough to go, you know what? Well, maybe we ought to look at this. Maybe, you know, the scientist 50 years ago, whoever he or she was, has a point. So that is what <laughs> I see with the, is, uh, the limitations that they operate from. Well, the spiritual people were like that too. You know, oh, and yeah, all yeah. honestly, I mean, if you yeah. go... And especially, you know, the, the, the closer you get to the new age crowd, the you wind up, crowd. Oh, um, you wind it's, up it's, it's, after a while, you're just like, I'm swimming in granola here. And really, my karma has taken on a really yeah. bad aura because I just. At least I you like, said granola. <laughs> I, I, I like, I like uh, Chris Dio's term for it. He calls it the new cage movement. New cage movement break out of that yeah. one, you have another one waiting for you. It's the new oh, cage. Yeah. Every day you have a new cage. To, yeah. You know I mean? yeah. 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 The, the new age movement is a kicker um, because it is, it is so it can be so imprisoning. I've, I've seen that. And I've, I've had, <laughs> I've had people who are recovering <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> in recovery and they yeah. find me and it's like, Oh, finally, I, I find, I found your video. And it's almost like they feel like they have permission to like be like, let go and not have to do this construct thing you know of what is expected um in in the in the new age thing and i always used to say you know well you know they some people don't didn't used to think that maybe i had any i knew what i was talking about because i wasn't wearing my light worker outfit you know <laughs> <laughs> the light worker outfit means you gotta have a big and i and i love crystals but you gotta have that certain look and you have to always sit like this and do all of this and i'm like what a bunch of crap you know it's just 
Totally. <laughs> it is so comical to me. It is so funny to me, you yeah, know, know, because suddenly they're like super holy because they're like doing this certain thing. Or, and I had one person, I remember I was going to do a, a workshop, a le, um, I'm sorry, a retreat. And I contact this place <laughs> to do this retreat. And uh, they must have went on my website. You would have thought I was doing voodoo or something. They went on my website and then they got, got back to me and said, you know, we're really, what you're teaching does not align and we cannot have that here. <laughs> I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> what, am I, what am I doing? You know, so that was so funny. I was like, well, what exactly did they see? Too much freedom. It was. Well, you're not, you drinking, know, and the you you're not drinking the Kool-Aid of the, of the New Age, the cult <laughs> right. of the New Age. Cult. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you know as well as I do, Sonia, because you come from a church background, that's exactly what you get with people who are coming out of any kind of religious experience. Right. I did this, you probably wouldn't know this, but from 2003 to around 2009, I was doing Christian shortwave radio. And in that time, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> and, in that, and in that time, I was basically telling people to get out of their churches. And I was basically trying to deprogram live on the air. And the, what the, the funny thing right. about it was I was deprogramming myself. And I reached a nexus point where I finally did what would be called, if it was commercial, commercial suicide. And I did a show where I just disassembled the whole epoch of this, this Christianity thing. Not to, not to disrespect the deity of what right. is revealed there but the structures itself of the religion. And when I did that, I watched an audience just go, we're out of here. We're done. <laughs> we're good. Bye. They're and like, going, you're going to okay. hell. We're not I, going I was to just about to, I'm just getting ready to uncork the bottle here because I've got a whole bunch of whoop ass coming on this stuff. Oh, and that, but that's what it's like. We're deprogramming yeah. ourselves. And yeah. by effect, we're kind of deprogramming people around us and giving them permission to become authentic and an expression that feels better to them. Yeah, and that's something that obviously the programming uh, doesn't really encourage that. Authenticity, we think authenticity is encouraged, but it really is not, not no, from that no. deep level. Not, it's not more, genuine more authenticity. Fine. Not genuine. No. Synthetic authenticity, like right. the authenticity, like, like the outward diversity and all that kind of crap right, synthetic, right, authenticity. Right. synthetic authenticity yeah, hold on is. frame <laughs> that yeah synthetic authenticity yeah it's yeah. about the group mind it, yeah. it, it, it is it it's is. about group thinking group mind um even even the idea you know unless people understand it they would take offense even the we are all one somehow right. also got <laughs> turned into something else I, I, and people don't realize that their their minds are brought into this warg um thinking this hive mind thinking even mm -hmm. in the idea of how we are one approached um or that you can't you know the whole everybody has to ascend together you know no. this <laughs> the, that you know that that whole <laughs> that whole push yeah. And so when you come along and go, well, how do you know that this person, this is what they need? Just because that's what you want to do. How do you know that? Yeah. And it's like, you, you can't say that because everybody has to be on board, get on board. Yeah. And it's like, but you're doing the same thing as religion. Religion, all, all organizations, it's important that everybody is invested in the same belief system. That's yeah. what makes the belief uh, real for people and that's what makes it strong and that's why they go out and recruit more people that's why they they uh have members go out and get more people because the more people you have to validate or to agree just like yep. we have agreed on this reality everything is about this agreement this sort of collective agreement more people we can have to agree on this particular religious belief or whatever new age uh, it's, a, it's, a it's all the same belief. thing yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's the same formula that goes on and on and on. And people are, and I get it, people are afraid of the unknown. Um, all kinds of, all religious structures give them just that. It gives them something to in, believe in, 
to invest in. Um, there is a sense of security with that as opposed to going, whoa, you're really on your own. You're creating, you're making up all this, you're making this happen. It was like, it's just too much. But if we could just give it all to Jesus, it'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, I, I mean, I, you know, as our good friend Crow says, belief is the enemy of knowing. And I, I think that's one of the most brilliant statements of all time. Yeah, you know, that, is, that makes and, sense. I mean, it's so also, I mean, the same thing could be said about people voting on stuff. And we have to have government because not having government would be chaos. Well, I'm pretty sure we have chaos now. So I don't see how the unknown, it's in that realm. I don't see how the unknown is any scarier than what we have right now. Cause it seems pretty scary to me right now. No. So I, you know, but what, back to what you were talking about, about the, we are one thing. I, one of the like phrases like that, we are one or ascend together. The one that really bothers me is unity consciousness. There's some people's consciousness. I don't want mine unified with them. That's exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. it's, it, it's, it's exactly it. And, and what I also find interesting is that, um, you know, we'll talk about Buddha and we'll talk about Yeshua and whoever some of the others are. And if from all the stories I've read, Hmm. There was no group mind on that. They were all just like they 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 all seemed to have gone off and done their own thing really on their own. It wasn't like they were with a group. You know, the the, the fact is whether the stories are true or not true, the fact is that none of those stories have indicated that they could not do and and evolve and expand without the group. But yet, when it comes to everybody else, there is this sense that you, we can't do it. So, so human beings have been taught, have uh, been programmed to believe one, uh, that they're less than, and mm. two, that you don't, you are not uh, capable of making decisions for yourself, um, of yeah, of knowing. Um, you ha always have to have this interceptor, this third party. Yeah. In everything we do, we have to have somebody else be responsible for us. Somebody has to go to somebody else to, to communicate with that, which is, you know, which that, which you want to get to, you know what I mean? Like you have yeah. to, there's always, always. a middleman. The government always. is the middleman. The priest is the middleman. Absolutely. All, all yep. that. Yep. And so to me, it feels like a barrier between wherever it is you think you came from or where you think you're going. You have right. to get permission to pass through that gate. That's right. Like that. yeah. That's right. And the it boundary just, guards, the boundary guards. Yeah. Are, yeah. yeah. And, and it just disillusions. It, keep, it keeps people um, in that state of being disillusioned. And even prayers, I remember people saying, oh, God, I'm not worthy. And you hear all of those things. So people are really programmed with this sense of, oh, you know, something bad's going to happen. If I, oh, you can't say that you're God. Oh, you can't, you know, there's always that. And you know what it takes me back to? It takes me back to this idea of um, slavery. It really does. Um, it does. It, you know, people don't think of it that way. But when I've gone to these big conferences. I go, you know what? Um, everybody's on the plantation. Everybody's picking cotton. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like totally. It's true. And 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 yet, within that, we are sort of programmed to uh, be divided with each other. So we don't notice that everybody. Is I'm actually in the same <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. Well, I'm picking, yeah, but I'm I'm picking cotton on the hill. You're picking cotton down yeah. there. So we we get all this. So it's so distracting, and then it keeps us all divided, so that it can this whole control thing can go on. If we're fighting with with each other, and we're thinking we're better than the other, we're not going to notice that we're all like in this weird kind of thing together. Yeah. Um, and so it's 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 an incredible game that's been going on for a while and in a sense of these these players who have been operating from that perspective they're masters at it they've been doing it for such a long time uh, and people are so beaten down and people are trying to survive we're talking now in the basic matrix and i say the basic matrix i'm talking about um just clues food clothes and shelter right. uh people in that survival for that um, and so people are distracted with that, making sure that they obey the laws because of the consequences. So it's always, always those things to keep up, make sure you have insurance or else, you know, if you get stopped, oh my God. So, so that's where the mindset is. And so those that run that uh, help to keep the majority of people 
uh, in that particular survival space. And those people, all they need after that is to be able to go to church, to get their little upload, to get their little feel good and start all over on Monday or if you go seven days a week or whatever. And so that's a whole matrix in itself of operating. So you don't really wake up and you don't really want to step out of it because of consequences. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So you, you know, you, you've described this a lot as a game and the matrix. Can you tell us from your perspective, what the fuck is this that we are in? <laughs> like you know, we've talking about a simulation, we've talked about containment systems. We've talked about constructs. We've talked about matrices. Like it has become very, very clear to me that we are in something. You yeah. know what I mean? That is, we are yeah. not just out having like, you know, some random experience, some right. uh, organic happening. Like we right. are in something and <laughs> are interacting with something that right. is on one level controlling us, but on another level, if, if you can sort of look beyond it, like what you're talking about, we have the ability to sort of free uh, ourselves. Over, uh, overcome the you know that By answering this question, the show is over. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so therefore, we cannot answer it. Their own questions. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but, this is actually where it does get interesting. Right, yeah, right, yeah because, it does. You know, we can, you can, we can either overcome the code or we can rewrite the code. We create our mm -hmm. own code. We can, um, you know, if we come to the understanding that everything is some sort of informational code and that we have been programmed, then we can become conscious of what programs we are taking in. We can rewrite some of these programs. We can, you know, we can, right. all of this kind of stuff. So like, give us sort of a layout of what it is you think we're in and sort of how this game is played. And, and you are, obviously someone who's been, you know, as are Randy and I in our own ways, but I'd love to hear from your perspective, what it is we're in and, you know, where you see yourself in that. <laughs> You're like, okay, could you tell us the meaning of life in two seconds? <laughs> we have, two doesn't words. Have to, doesn't have to be two <laughs> seconds. Ex expand well, greatly. I just feel like uh, this the conversation God. starts. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, no, no, no doubt. I mean, and it goes back to that idea that what I was saying before of this default program and this network, I mean, we're, we're, we're our brains, we're networked into a virtual system, right? And then um, part of that too, when I do workshops with people have been following my work for a while, um, they do understand that, I was gonna make a point, they do understand that, um, God, it just, I was there and then it went out my, my, my uh, mind. I was going to say something that was really uh, significant to that besides being networked. That's okay. In, Talk yourself virtual. through this. It'll come yeah, back I, through the circle. Oh yeah, it, it, it'll come back. But anyway, the, the fact is that we are networked into the system. And I remember thinking, what is it that knows, how does our body know to start um, either our um, puberty or, you know, people start getting older. To me, that was like a huge question. What is it that is keeping track? And you know, most people don't think like that, but that's how my mind works. What is keeping track of us that is aligned with our body? And then I start realizing how we're networked into this program. Once again, this default mm -hmm. system, this virtual um, system, I know what I was going to say, but networked into this virtual system. And as long as you, you are not of a certain level of understanding, you have not, you have not managed to pierce a veil of understanding. You, no matter how much you think, you know, that default program will continue to regulate the, the, the whole function of your body based on these 24 hour cycle and this whole system that's a whole other thing i don't, I don't want to like get too crazy for people but um something is counting the cycles then yeah yeah oh, no, come on let's get existence. crazy and, and go ahead, it, requires, <laughs> it requires more explanation and because you know i've been doing this i've been talking about this for years so some of the stuff we talk about um i ne it never sees the light of day on youtube because we i mean even some of the more recent stuff which i know i will not say on the show i, I really won't but um but something is counting us i want people to, mm -hmm. to at least realize that counting the cycles 
Because when we talk about our birthdays, we have to start thinking about it, not just go, yeah, yeah, I know there's cycles. No, you don't. You need to focus on that and realize, wait a second, it is. The rotation of 12 months, whatever we call 12 months, um, based on how the system works with the movement of the planet and all of that, and then another 12 months comes another cycle and a cycle and cycle. And then you have these um, uh, expiration points because that's what they are. I mean, we call it death, but I started looking at it differently. I started looking at it more from uh, a lot of computer language because honestly, in the end, that's what it is. Yeah. And when you can't step out of your, I mean, again, I'm going to use the word, woo -woo -woo. when you can't step out of there, you're going to be stuck in that default. This, this deciphering and understanding how this thing works requires you to basically step up into a space of like you're an engineer or you're a scientist. It really does. Mm -hmm. Where your thinking changes, that in itself starts to break the code. Yeah. But if you don't do that, then you are going to be on this thing. Um, you, is, you're going to be on this thing. Anyway, that is significant. People might not realize that, but that counting of the cycles and, and people expiring and you don't understand why um, you're shutting down and why we're, you know, we're looking old or age um, and, and all of that, it, it's, it's all significant to this game. That is a major part of this game. That is the ultimate beat the game. Yeah. It is the ultimate beat the game is to get, not have the, the system, the default system uh, expire you. It, it is a very big part of that whole structure. But people are so wired with that understanding of, you know, you've, you know everything, you know, we, we come, we die, because they don't know what else to do. I get it. You don't know. But until... We, the more people start to understand this is the more the program starts to change. The program is dependent on us, yet we, if we're, we're so backwards that it just keeps feeding us our own uh, limitations, our own deficiency. We just keep looping back, keep it looping back. You keep just back. kind of, in a very interesting fashion, dropped into something and Emily and I have talked about this and we've talked about it and we've done two shows with Cliff High on time. Mm -hmm. um, one of my theories has been for quite a while that we are generating the time fields themselves. That right. the, the people talk about the Saturn moon matrix and mm -hmm. I think, oh, well, that's very true. I actually mm -hmm. think that's the default system. Right. What, re what is represented by that. But what you just what you just touched on there has more to do with the fact that we are asynchronous. We're running a clock pulse that's not on the same quartz oscillator that's running the master clock. In other words, we're pulsing at a different beat. We're pumping code at a different level. We're amping up our coding skills to higher level languages, more abstraction layers, all of the things that, you know, you, you, you computer people out there will probably understand better. But I, I came to the point where I had one of these epiphanies in meditating on time that I had somehow had control over, relatively speaking, my own mm -hmm. time field. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a thought that I had long ago, but it keeps coming back to me that it doesn't seem like such an abstraction anymore. Because metaphysically and scientifically, I'm starting to see time isn't real the way we've counted it. Time is enforced upon us in what you call this construct. Right. It, it, time is relevant to this construct. Yes. Time allows us to have these, what appears to be these segmented moments for the experience. So in, in even being able to look at it that way so that then we're not like mad at time, but to realize <laughs> its existence for a particular experience, our interpretation of it has been, um, it, it has allowed us to then to have these experiences that we measure. Uh, we've given quantitative value to in terms of, you know, moments, these, these fragmented moments that we identify um, as time. Um, uh, 
also, there it is again. It was there, and then I was going to say it, and then it was just, why does it do that? It goes like, Shh, no, you're not going to say it. <laughs> um, but, but I think that one of the things that's really important, too, is that also something that I do with, in, in the workshops and the retreats is to people to realize who are we speaking of? I think that that's another important factor. When we say us and I and who, which part of you, wh who, what are you talking about? And I think that that distinction is really important because there's, there's a couple of different aspects of you. There is the I that is the um, conscious one for this game experience there is that aspect of you that just kind of runs stuff and whatever here um and then there's that part of you that is supersedes mm -hmm. all of that but you see the challenge too that we have is that people have identified everything about who they are with this particular material i this and <clears throat> this this lower level i so even if it's new age or you're spiritual or you're a scientist, they've all identified the totality of who they are as this I. They don't stop and go, well, who is I? And they, this limit, this I that, that runs everything down there is incredibly intelligent. And it has gathered enough information to make you think that you are on it and that's not the part of you that is really on it that's that lesser part of you that has has figured out certain things enough but it's still operating within um that context it's still that part so it, it we are so multifaceted there's mm -hmm. there's multiple aspects um of who we are um Anyway, there's, there's, there's just a whole lot around that. And, I, and that's what I found is that that became important to recognize. Because I'll say that. I'm like, okay, well, who's working right now? Who's, <laughs> who's, which part of me is operating right now? Who's doing all this talking? And then I also found, realized that we are, you know, just pretty schizophrenic. Um, there's parts of us that there's different aspects of who we are. There's a part of us that, uh, a Sonia, that seems to be more of the leader Sonia, where I, um, I, you know, there's things that I can just take care of. I mean, that's the really powerful, to solve everything. And then there's another part of us that's more proficient in a particular area and maybe another aspect of us in another particular area. We don't, we don't notice that we, you know, unless you start paying attention. Um, but it's really fascinating. And I've had times where uh, that part of me that is the Sonia that is more, you know, boom on it, where that part seems to have taken off for months. Yeah. <laughs> and I've said, you know, eventually, cause you're, you're on, you're on the auto. And so the other parts of you, has enough information to mimic functioning yeah. and getting through but there's some stuff that is just you just you can't do it you can't get it done and i'll say you know what i don't know where you're at but you need to turn you need to get back right now because <laughs> you know you don't know if you're on vacation but you need to you need yeah. to make your way back here right now so those are things where we're in a way scared to look at when we say we're multidimensional, we only like those terms when we can put it up here like, woo, -woo. Yeah. but no, when I say we are like, we cannot even begin to understand what we are. It's just not what we think. We're not these little limited things. It's not like that. We're operating on so many different um, levels. And I think it's, you know, so anyway, some of, some of that, is what I wanted to share that that's really important for people to realize. And again, there was another part of it and that will come back as well yeah. to explain that. Um, one, of, So I liked some of the things that you hit on there. And one of the things that Randy and I have spent a lot of time talking about in our personal conversations is this idea of aspect cells. Exactly. Right? I was mm -hmm. just going to bring yeah. that up. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. we deal, we've dealt a lot, like a main crux of our Randy did the show for many, many years before mm -hmm. I joined him. 
but the main crux of our show has largely been about mind control. And with that comes topics of MK Ultra and alters and compartmentalized personalities. Mm -hmm. And I, we've always felt the people who are running these programs are what they're really doing is finding a way to tune into and manipulate these different aspect selves that you're sort of speaking of right now. And, and then also the multi-level thing that you're talking about, you know, and there's, you know, there's that self we we're talking about that supersedes it all. The one that um, you might call your knowing self or the part of the self that exists outside of this construct, right, or outside right. of this game mm -hmm. that we're sort of, we have those flickering moments where we kind of align with that. And right. we have, you know, that's when we see the whole game. That's when we see what's going on. And it's really difficult to stay there for a long time. Mm -hmm. And it's so much easier. Or it's just not so much easier, but it, it it is our tendency to fall back into one of these other sort of well, it rubber bands back yes. because yeah, it, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just get sort of ding, pull back into it because the default program is the common. It is the known that the brain, you, our brains are are more wired and geared towards the default human program, yeah. uh, and so it. It takes its cue, obviously, yes, from us, and it waits for permission, but that permission um, has to be uh, repetitious. That, that desiring to uh, transcend has to, can't be, okay, well, yeah, I'm going to meditate on Tuesdays at 10 o'clock, you know, and I'm going to do that, you know, for whatever short time, uh, whatever it is you do. Um, it, it requires to see that this is a new command. And then, and then what it does is it begins to, um, I, I hate to use the word open, but I can't think of another word right now. It begins to allow more of um, the, the, the access that it has, because the brain has access to every potential every, reality. Yeah. Anyway. So based on your perception, it begins to allow you, you know, more to be seen and to be understood, but based on the belief system and again, and perception, the, more, the narrower your perception and, and, and belief is because the belief and perception are tied together. If it's narrow, then the brain, that's the permission you've given it just to show us things within the context of acceptability, the things yeah. that we can accept as a possibility. Uh, and then, but the more we say, the more it starts to do this and the more you start seeing and you start to move gradually, um, you start to transcend certain aspects of this reality. Like you're saying, um, those that are attempting to tap into uh, the, this, whatever different aspects of us, there's a point where that's not possible. Yeah. Um, the brainwave uh, measures differently and, and it, they're only able to tap in on a certain frequency, certain, yeah. certain levels of where your, your, the brain wave is measuring. Once you start transcending the default program, which means brain, your brain wave uh, um, is vi your vibration and frequency, that's going to change. You start being outside of that field and you're, you're unaffected. Now, this to me, this is all just to me just makes scientific sense so it's this isn't like we're going oh yeah like some people would say oh we just raise your vibration they have no idea what they're talking about yeah. we just have to raise our frequency it's like well do you know what the hell you're talking about right now that right. just sounds good but if we understand one we understand the body you understand um how how everything um is measured. We've got these, this electromagnetic spectrum that I always talk about um, from the Hertz field, which is where we are operating at down here in that Hertz field, um, goes right up. You know, what is it? Uh, Hertz, which is the radio waves. Um, is it uh, infrared and, 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 and visible light and ultraviolet light yeah. and um, what is that? X-ray and gamma ray and I'm probably mis missing one. Um, but, but that's why they form a pyramid because yeah. it's the frequency. It's, it's the slower frequency down here. And then that frequency as it's the, the cover of dark faster, side of the moon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> as it starts to, you know, as the frequency changes, because obviously the spin is faster. Um, the wave, the, the wavelength shortens um, as the spin increases. And so we're operating in in these um, these 
actors. This is what yeah. we're dealing with. Yeah. I, I mean, I always see it as sort of there's information stored at various levels of reality and frequencies, various places in the morphogenic field or the causal plane or whatever you want to call right. it. And when you, uh, with your body and how you take care of your body is a lot of it, but also just where you are at with your understanding of yourself and your own consciousness, that sort of, you know, that's that supersedes when, everything. Yeah, that, that, yes. Yeah. That yeah, supersedes and, everything. That's when the actual raising of your vibration will open those fields. And it's almost like there's just a book there. All of a sudden, everything opens up and you can kind of see the information that's stored at these various levels. And, right. I, and then I think the challenge for us is to um, go there and, you know, get, pick, pick up those pieces of information or, you know, bring back some of that expand, expanded perception. Sometimes it's hard to hold on to all the things that you see there, but hold on to as much of it as we can and bring it back and really try and understand it and integrate it. And the further, the better we're able to sort of explain it to others, make sense of it and start to put it to use here. I find that the more, the easier it is to then go back and more information opens up for you. You know what I mean? Like if you're just going and looking and not doing anything with it, eventually you're just going to the same spot all the time and nothing's right. Really Right. And I think that um, how I also like to look at it is that this this has to become our normal. So mm -hmm. it's not we, you know, which is how I, I do it. Um, and that's what the many of the people there's some amazing people that I've have become like family over the years when we get together it is just off the charts this, they're like so incredible and amazing but it is to for it to be our normal where this is this is how you function all the time yeah. there is we're not having to go there because you're there and you're online and you're offline you're you're always you know Mm -hmm, totally, you're, yeah. You're, yeah, that, <laughs> that's, totally yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, it's the normal, it's the realizing that, um, because then otherwise people go back to that same old concept of thinking, waiting for this, this moment of suddenly you're like here, you know, uh, and you don't realize in every moment yeah. You're getting to every next here according to your own evolution and expansion. Where you're trying to get to is already here in this moment. It's just a matter of where, you, yeah, right, yeah. where you are exactly in your understanding. That is what you are perceiving and experiencing right now. But that's why there is no here nor there. Because yeah. everything, everything just simply is. And it's just a matter of what we are walking into in that moment based on um, our awareness and what we will allow ourselves to, uh, to see, um, to experience, to know, to understand how open are you? How open are you? And that's why, um, I, my latest book is called simple ways to step outside of your comfort zone, letting go of an outdated life. Um, and it's to really get people to walk themselves through a truthful look, which is scary for us to take a truthful look at ourselves to really say, this is where I'm at, without blame. See, when pe see people think that when they take a truthful look at themselves, it means they're going to have to judge and blame themselves. No, we just want to see where, where we're at. It's kind of like you're taking tally, you're looking, you're like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and you write that down. So this is how I think. Oh, okay. And that's it. Wh Whatever has happened to you in the past, to me, I, I say it's just all experiences. If we can break that down to all this is about is experiences, whether they're, if we've considered them horrific or not. Ultimately, in the, end, in the end, it's been about a series of experiences. Now, how we interpret that and how we begin to understand this starts to change the kind of experiences we will have because they're no longer necessary to keep having mm, certain experiences. I like that. I like yeah. That. yeah. Yeah. It's basically totally taking changes. ownership. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It, 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 that's right. Uh, and responsibility doesn't mean blame. It doesn't no. mean regret. But people are wired like that. They, they yeah. think that it means that they've got to blame themselves or somebody else or regret. It's like, no, that's, that's not what this is about. Yeah. When we can see that, we have an opportunity to go, ah, now you might look and go, well, what did I gather from that? Because I assure you, I don't care what you've experienced. You have gained something from it and you look and go, what did I gather from this? 
and surely you will see that there is something and then you can have that ah okay and you can give yourself permission without massive therapy you can give yourself permission <laughs> go you know what <laughs> I'm good. Oh, thanks. I wish I didn't learn 25 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm good. Guess what? I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. And, you know, I mean, so, I, yeah. so, so as you mentioned this book and that brings up, we just burned through a little over an hour and it was just like gliding over the waters. Um, but you mentioned the book and maybe it would be a good place here for you to let us know where such things can be found, your websites, your books, and things like that. We're not done. We're not done yet. We're gonna. We're, we're not done yet. No, we're gonna. Here, we're yeah. Gonna, let's, yeah. Oh, it's just like we're gonna be here till morning. <laughs> 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 it's just an experience. No. It is. It is. But tell um, people where they can find Sonia Barrett's uh, books and materials. Yes, yeah, so you can go to the real Sonia Barrett dot com and. Um, Sonia Barrett was taken, in case anybody wonder, why don't you say the real Sonia Barrett? Because we're going to do soniabarrett.com. My son is like, why don't you, you should do that. And I'm like, uh, it's taken. So he's like, well, why don't you just make it the real soniabarrett.com? I'm like, you know what? And I by implication, all the others are fake. So <laughs> yeah, you know, what you know. yeah. By default, you know. <laughs> so it's the real soniabarrett.com and all, all my books are there. There's four books that are there, um, holographic. Uh, canvas fusing of mind and matter which celebrates 10 years um and uh will actually will be relaunched but not for a while so you can get it there a journey of possibilities um health and inside job and outside business which is sort of a companion to the film they're not sold together you can get them together but separately um and then a simple ways to step outside of your comfort zone letting go of an outdated life is actually a handbook it's a it's a little handbook um that's packed it's a seven day program that could take you two months to get through the seven days nice. <laughs> that's what i've heard nice. um so i walk you through in the morning uh in the morning when you you, you know you get up um you have what a the set of, of information for you you're always evaluating yourself uh and then in the evening um and you know the same thing for for seven days and then actually there's a court there's a the videos that go with that so there's two separate things there's the 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 manual the i mean the the small book and also the book and then the videos which is like a three or four minute video in the morning and in the evening and it's very basically what's what's in the book but you get to watch it and i kind of walk you through and talk to you morning and evening um, and so there is that set, but I wanted to make the book also separate for somebody that said, you know, think they can't afford it, but they could buy the book. So that's why I did that. Now also tell people, I know you do so much of your work is based around workshops and retreats and whatnot. Can you tell people a little bit about that? So if they're interested in the things they're hearing here tonight, they can join. Um, you to... Yes. Um, well, you go on the website. What I did was I, I did, I have a, a video or um, audio downloads in my store of basically everything that I've ever done. And I did it that way just because I never do the same workshop twice. <laughs> you know, one, once I grow and I move, I move to the next thing. So I don't go around doing the same workshop over and over and over. So people could go to the store on my site and they can basically – find anything they want to in terms of where they are to begin and I have some six months workshops meaning that we meet once a month for six months and those are profound I do them that way so that people have an opportunity to in that month after we've met once for the month a two-hour workshop they have an opportunity for that whole month on their own to to really do whatever to to take their lives to the next level and then we meet again and that works really um really well so it's not like you're cramming everything down um all at once uh and so there are different stages of that depending on how many you know what workshops one has taken to be able to take uh some of the the workshops because they get really into more heavy duty um and when i say heavy duty my work and everything that I do is about really getting people to depend on themselves and to realize their own power and to access 
information on their own. It's not, it, this is not about dependency. And so even though we have a wonderful um, group of people that like to come and meet and do the, work, the retreats and stuff like that, everybody is strong individually. Um, which is really, really important. You mean you're and, not running a cult? <laughs> um, no, I was thinking about it, but I don't have the patience to do it. So, <laughs> I, you know, and the retreats. No are, new cage with Sonia. <laughs> no, no. Right. I, I, yeah, everybody knows. It's like, so when people come to the retreats and it's very different than they think and the, the workshops, they always say it's very different because it's not, uh, they're not where you're, you just get a packet and you, you know, we're going to sit at nine and we're going to do this. It's not all <laughs> like that. Um, but it's profound and we go to different places. We're going to Sedona next year. Last year we were in, where were we? We went to Joshua Tree the year before in Ojai and where were we? Mount Shasta. Um, I remember the other place, but so we go to these various places and I get a property that's usually like, I don't know, some million dollar property where we're the only ones on the property. It's always some incredible house. And we all, we are all in that house so we can interact and just laugh and get just ridiculous. And it's funny. We, we, we do a lot of laughing. So it's, it is, it is very different. It's very freeing. Um, and then out of that freedom, we have these profound conversations and, and, and everybody uh, inputs, everybody shares their piece, which is so important because everybody gets to hear something that might not have come from me, but you know, they might hear from somebody else and it's like, wow, profound. So that's, that's kind of how um, that is. So that's that and the workshops obviously you can get online on the website and you'll see the workshops and all of that there's a lot of stuff there guys so go take a, yeah. <laughs> take a all right so now we can kind of dig deeper here in the the second half here <laughs> like <laughs> dig deeper <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> we were just shallow we were just yeah. stuff earlier <laughs> so, <laughs> Kind of, well, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of the, now we're going to go to the deep end. This is swimming lessons, guys. <laughs> kind of, what, what, I, what we wanted to talk about with you a little bit was I know you've been talking some about this whole AI and the, you know, how it's affecting human evolution and whatnot. And from the way you describe, you know, the game and sort of how I've also come to understand whatever it is this we are in, in a certain sense, we've always sort of been in an AI takeover, but now there's this kind of, there's this thing coming up where there's a huge conversation around AI and, and how it's starting to um, people Take who never. Over. <laughs> <laughs> Was that the word you're used to searching for? No. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, the conversation, like people who've never even thought about things like that are now starting to become aware that mm. there is this thing and that with the, all this silly nonsense with the Sophia robot and the, you know, in Saudi Arabia and her having her own cryptocurrency. And a lot of the talk around uh, is our cryptocurrency is part of an integration into an AI system and takeover. Just, I'd like to kind of hear your, your thoughts on some of that. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way she throws this stuff out and go, yeah, but that's all. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, there's that. Well, first of all, there's that little thing called gradualism. And uh, people just didn't really notice that this is where we were going. This is where we're heading, um, that this moment was coming. So suddenly they wake up and they're like, oh, what happened here? No, it's been happening for a while from uh, Star Trek to watching Small Wonder to yeah. uh, Small Wonder <laughs> Small to the Jetsons to Lost in Space to, you know, all these things. It, it, we've been, our minds have been gradually, gradually being prepared for this transition uh, from our ATM cards you know, when they've developed those um, ATM machines, um, you know, and, and you start using your card a lot and cash, you know, less, um, barcodes on items and things, uh, the registers that are self-serving, re self-serve registers now, all of it has been gradually happening. The self, the phones, all this uh, technology, now we got the self-driving cars. So it's been building 
up to this. Now, I think years back, I remember telling people that, as I did a lot of talk on this like years ago, but I remember telling people, I'm like, um, look, and what was I telling people? <laughs> I was like, look, you have to understand that um, this is really about you waking up. This is really about you understanding that there is a evolution that is happening. No matter how we want to look at it, we have to understand that this is technology. This thing that we've been talking about, about yeah. this virtual experience, this whole thing is some, some high co tech cosmic, you know, technology, the whole thing, whatever we think spirituality is, it's, it's, it's on that level. It's, it's a different kind of technology, but nonetheless it is. And so we're mimicking, um, the bigger thing, everything mimics the bigger thing. And that's basically what people have to understand. Now, how they choose to interact with much of this, um, and, it, and certainly it's not about running away from it either, but it's about understanding. Oh, this is what I was gonna say, is that years ago, I remember here watching, here in, watching this video, actually. It was a conference at the time called the Immortality Conference. And it was a group of scientists that were trying to de uh, decipher or decide, should robots have rights? Should they start preparing you know, to give robots rights? And this is like back in maybe like 2008. You know, of course, I was saying that, but yeah, nobody, because it wasn't, the robots weren't big, you know, nobody's paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but they were trying to figure out should robots have rights, um, because they said that there is going to be a species that live alongside us as human beings, that that was happening. You've seen all the movies, was it a, um, AI, whatever, with Will Smith. It, it, the bottom line of it, if people look, the commercials, the vodka commercial with the female robot. Yeah. It's all been happening. So it's not like it just happened. It's all been happening. Now, how do you choose to deal with this? The way I see this is this. Every system um, has to go through some sort of growth, some sort of evolution, whether it be a, some, a universe, a, you know, whatever, a planetoid, a human being, everything has to progress. And what I see at this time is the opportunity, human beings have an opportunity to if, to really take their evolution to the next level. I mean, this activation of this, this brain, this opening up, and this is why the movies about um, superhuman abilities, telekinesis, um, tele, you know, well, and, and the idea of teleportation, um, telepathy, um, all of these things, right? are natural parts of what human beings can do. Yeah, and I know right. some people that's are just right. like, well, you yeah. know, what? But they're all natural. And that's the reason why you have movies and TV shows like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and The Inhumans and Gifted and all those shows yep. are coming up and they're, they're triggering an, an, a, an understanding, something that's already in all of us. There's a, mm -hmm. there's a deep realization about this. That's why we're drawn to it in all of us, but on this side, we're seeing AI and what's happening. And, and so you've got them going, okay, this is what you can do. This is, this is the progress. This is the evolution for you. That sure that's coming, but then you're going there, you're going up. So it depends on how people choose to look at it. And people are looking at it in fear. Oh, they're going to take over. Oh, they're, yeah, well, yeah. yeah, they're going to if your brain don't, doesn't work. If you can't, you know, if you're not evolving yourself, if, you're, if you forget that this is the most incredible supercomputer and that it's able to process and do things that we consider to be superhuman, that it is our whole everything, this ship, this vehicle is waiting to be activated. Um, that's something that people have to realize. So, so we have to be able to activate ourselves to turn ourselves on. We're not on. We've been just operating, like I said, on default and the body just does its thing because it's programmed to survive. So we've been operating. It's been operating on that mode. So now pilot is back. The pilot has to come back and it's like, okay, we're going to turn everything on. 
okay, boom, boom, boom. Uh, and now you're, we're going to be able to do all these things. This is where we're going. So that is, that is what I see. I'm not worried about the AI and what they're going to do. They're going to do what they're going to do. Yeah. That they're, they're, they're an ass. They're an, a level of of us. And yeah. Some people don't want to hear that, but we can learn about our design by looking at that technology, and that is what people fear. People fear that they're going to be reduced. They're going to be less than what they thought they were. You know, if we look at that, oh no, we no, we're different from them because we have a soul. You know, well, what, you don't even know what a soul is. Um, you know, we're conscious. We're conscious. What, do you know what that is exactly? So yeah, so I do push the envelope on that in terms of you know what consciousness really is and all of that part. Um, <laughs> some of the stuff I'm like, no, I'm not going to say it on here, but. Um, I think to realize that 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 the technology, this body, this vehicle, is very similar to that, and that's how we're able to design those things. And yeah. AI and robots are two different things. You know, artificial intelligence or AI um, actually is supersedes. They it runs. It's it runs, um, you know, the, the robot. Sure, the robot can function on its own, but the robot functions based on just um, a set of programs. AI um, is is based on algorithms and also able to begin to create their own language, which is something that has happened. I don't know if you are yeah. aware of that. Yeah, where the, I know seen that where they're face, yeah, Facebook shut. Facebook, well, they shut yeah. down that, but but it's still going on because. It's still going on. They're communicating across the planet and nobody can decipher what that language is because they've created their own language basically because our language, this English language is not, um, it's not that it's not comparable, but it is limiting uh, also. Um, and so they, they, they're able to create their own language. And not only that, they have been, AI has been learning from all of us learning from everybody through all of social media all that information is just being gathered about human beings and that's how they're shaping themselves again years ago i kept saying that when they kept saying well no they can't i go what do you think makes you you so much you are a data bank of information that you cannot even believe collected from uh, the, the, the however long human beings have been on the planet, we have an incredible data bank of information, which makes us our reference point. We, we are referencing that information all day long. Well, they're doing the same thing too. And, and because of all the information they will have collected, it will, they will understand emotions. They will, uh, because it's all data. You can break down emotions to, uh, in one way, to, to bits, to zeros and ones. Um, electrochemical impulses they're you know they're able to do that um we're able to do that and so they will start they're gathering that kind of information and and they're, they're basically will be able to mimic us they'll be able to mimic emotions and so on and so forth and that's something people uh like they, they can't do that and why not but, but now you've used the term mimic which indicates there's something authentic and then there's something which is able to replicate this. It runs in an algorithm. And to a certain sense, it's autonomous. It's able to spin off concepts. It can create languages. So somewhere in there, there's an X factor in terms of what the authentic thing is. When we look at the human, what the human is and how it functions organically do we expect to see machines that eventually are able to go to the level of spontaneity and creativity of humans? Because is, is a machine able to exceed its creator's programming? Can it self-program? We know it can do natural language. We know it can do uh, metadata and all of its own code. Can sure it, it can. in effect yeah, program sure. above oh, yeah, sure. its own level? Sure, sure it can, because everything is designed to want to evolve. And uh, regardless of what it is, I mean, you get a bacteria and everything is fighting to stay alive. And when there is enough information that is gathered, um, ultimately, I mean, it's like, you know, I guess Sophia, I mean, 
they they want to have children. I mean, they're talking like that, right? Information, and it sounds really crazy. However, that happens. That's it's irrelevant. I, I think anyway, right now. But ultimately, we don't know what happens a, a thousand years from now. What that becomes. What did we start out as? Where, how did we get here to where we are? And I think that um, people have to. If we, if we want to see clearly and if we want to unmask ourselves and if we want to get off this default system, we have to be open to looking at all the potentials and possibility, not necessarily going, well, this is the absolute truth, but to be able to let your mind wander into any areas of thinking of possibility that is what it's about. The minute you narrow and you go, no, that is not possible. The minute you have locked yourself in, because we cannot continue to say all that is ex all that exists is potentials. We exist in an ocean of potentiality. Everything is possible. Then, if everything is possible, then everything is possible. This is the this is the the crazy thing that we have a hard time with. We only want things to be possible that we're comfortable with. Yeah. This is the truth. <clears throat> so here we are. What we have is our own evolution and expansion beyond the game structure as it is right now and becoming what we cannot even conceive of at this time. Uh, do we move into, there's a possible potential for moving into uh, your body, morphing into a, p a potential reality space that is just based on sound and you're just pure sound? Uh, is that possible? Or pure whatever it is, moving in, you're morphing into all these different potentials. So who cares at that point? If I mean, yeah. if that's what they are, then that's, that's their their turn as machine to do what it does but they're actually pushing they're actually there forcing the human race to move forward if, if people really want to look at well, it that's pretty yeah. interesting actually yeah I when, was when, say, go ahead when when somebody like ray kurzweil talks about the singularity and <clears throat> the response in kurzweil's thesis is simply that we have to go to a man-machine interface in order to prevent the singularity or to prevent assimilation by the machine, sort of mm -hmm. the Star Trek board complex. My argument is mm -hmm. well, you're, you're placing a limiting technology on something that's unlimited because we, we, we're, 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 try, we're doing this out of fear. We're doing this out of defense. Exactly, exactly, precisely. And this is what some of these people, those clients, those scientists, I hear them talk and I see their limitation. Yeah. It's like they'll say this wonderful, powerful thing over there, and then suddenly they reduce it to this limit. Yeah, but now we have to go ahead and merge with the machine. Okay, that's going to be relevant in certain cases for people that need limb replacement and, and we have not yet learned how to grow a limb. There are scientists that are seeing that. We sort of already that. have that now. Stephen yeah. Hawking is sort of the poster child for that. There you go. Yeah. You know? But but we're going to be able to do that, of course. Yeah, they're looking at can you know transfer consciousness to what well, if if that's what you want to do. All those possibilities exist, and I think to me that's the bottom line of it. I don't even care when people talk about oh the Earth is flat or round. I don't care. <laughs> Neither do I. Neither do we. Square, Neither I don't way. Care if it's square or triangle. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter to me. It's just it's just you're just you're just that's just a distraction to me. Yeah. Um. But what what you see is this bigger picture. Now, what is beautiful is everybody gets something, a place they can hang out in and be distracted or whatever they want to do. If you want to fight about the earth being flat as opposed to the earth being round, guess what? You can hang out there <laughs> forever. Day. That's the point. You can That's hang the out the there point. forever. Yeah. You can hang out there and just fight everybody on it. You know, whatever you want to do. There, this is like a big amusement park and there's something for everyone. Now you get people like maybe us, we're looking on and we're seeing what they're doing and we're like, oh, that's so funny. Okay, well, uh, I'll, just, uh, I'll just be moving on up over here because I'm kind of I'm kind of not interested. I'm kind of done with that because you see through it, which kind of takes the fun out of it because you yeah. see through, through it. So there's no need to even have you that. See, experience. for me, that was an interesting moment. And I engaged Flat Earth for a while 
not the concept, but the people, because they were challenging a perception. And I thought, this is, this is actually kind of cool. You sit mm -hmm. down and you think about it and you think, well, what if it's really not like that? But then what is it like? And I just like what Tesla said, you know, he said it's a realm. And that, that opens up yeah, a whole bunch that. of that's possibilities. It. That's, yeah. it, yeah. that's all that we have are realms. Anyway, a realm yeah. in, in the holographic canvas, I describe, I say, um, real realm and reality. Those three words are offshoots of each other. Um, uh, real is realm of focus. Whatever your focus is on, whatever you're you're on, and you're having a relationship with and exchanging, like right now, you and I are talking, and I'm looking at everything on my desk. Um, that's right now. That's real for me. Whatever I'm focusing on, so it's real uh, realm um, and and reality. So the realm that I'm operating on is it, operating in is this space that. I'm, I'm having this experience. All we have are realms. That's it. Different realms um, that are immeasurable. Uh, I, we can't even measure nanoseconds. They're right there, right behind each other. Uh, and so, and, and you're entering various realms. They look the same. They might look exactly the same, but every choice you make, every thought that you have changes the very idea of where you think you are. You are not ever, it's just it's not static. You're constantly moving, but reality is not so, the same. And so defining the construct as a, okay, so Shakespeare said all the world's a stage. The stage. Mm -hmm. In the stages that he, in the plays that he staged at the Globe Theater. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, yeah. but by the very act of us challenging the construct, we change the construct. Absolutely. That which is observed yes. in consciousness is changed by consciousness. Absolutely. 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 And that's why it's the observer effect. Right. right? And that's why scientists affect their own um, experiments. The, yeah. You know. So, uh, you know, Schrodinger's cat also. <laughs> you yeah. know. So it's, it's all of these factors. And I think the more that we are understanding that, the more that thing where I talk about normalizing, you know, your, your, every, your every moment, this is just the way you operate. This is the way you function. All of that understanding takes us away from the struggle and the fight about trying to get things to be a particular way out of comfort, but just realizing that there is this flow. And as I open up and as I allow and as I realize that everything is moving according to me and according to where I am and my understanding and I I am on the I'm riding this this wave and you know I'm moving through so all my choices um, are taking me into a different reality it mm. might look the same and sometimes you'll go outside and maybe in the morning you go out and everything looks the same but it doesn't there's a sense yeah. the sun shines differently. The whole the energy of it, it's like, hmm, it's almost like it's not really the same earth as you woke up, you know, you went to bed right. and you you know. So yeah. so and and you can see it change in the very moment. You're on yeah. the freeway and but it's it's changing, it's constant because nothing is static. It's what? It's wave and particle. Everything is constantly ch changing for us. And is it that it's changing? It's not really that it's changing. It's we are always entering into a potential that is relevant to where we are in that very moment of understanding. Yeah, yeah. it's like we're moving through realities that are changing as we understand that we're experiencing. It. Exactly, yeah. precisely. That's like, all that is happening. We're not really creating anything. It's just its potentials and where do you, you know, where you yeah. walk in, into uh, per se. And I think that begins to change so much about what we experience and um, our financial situation. I mean, there's so, so many things, you know, is there money? There is no money. I mean, Let's I've, talk about that for a minute. Hold on a second. Real, real quick, guys, what, what, before you go on, you know what it reminds me of? Do you guys remember that show? I can't remember if it was Reading Rainbow or Romper Room, but at the end of the show, the kids would be in that fake car up in the air and the car wouldn't be moving, but there'd be a screen behind them and sort of as what the teacher was talking about would sort of show up on the screen. It looked I like was they were on moving to a different room. reality. 
Oh, you were in Romper. I was oh, in Romper Room. God, it's been I was a kid. But you know what I'm talking wow. about? Like the yeah. car would be staying in the same place, but these, mm -hmm. as the different ideas were circulated by the story that was being read, the different wow. realities would show up sort of on the screen yeah. behind, and it looked like the car was moving. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I had romper room, but but when I was in Jamaica, um, I had romper room. Our romper yeah. room was a was was a spinoff of this, but I think it was. Um, they had they locally yeah. produced those shows. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I remember Emily just played galloping. Judy Garland, and I was in romper room. So no, <laughs> that is funny. No, I would just gallop through the house on my broom because she'd have those horses <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Up yes, with us yeah. and gallop and gallop you know I'm like, yeah and i get the broom and i'm like oh, over but you know anyway fun times you see those are the fun parts of this game you know, yeah, fun yeah, parts yeah. Of this experience there are fun parts to this yeah game. the whole thing is fun oh, and it's I, totally it's, fun it's totally fun but that's that's part of the yeah. key that's part of yeah. the key is the humor is the loving it and i tell people guess what what I found out was the key is falling in love with this madness. When you totally. fall in love with it, yeah, that's what starts to well, free you. If we also, if we actually escaped the matrix, we'd have nothing to fucking do. We'd have nothing no. to talk about. We'd be bored oh, no. of fucking shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. No, because we did well peace all day. You know. And if we didn't yeah. have the craziness, you couldn't pray for peace. You know. You couldn't have the experience of yeah. rounding up, <clears throat> rounding up people. I didn't bring my water. <clears throat> rounding up people to pray for peace or do any of those things. And I think people have to stop and recognize that. Well, that's you're talking now about contrast, basically. Yeah, yeah. Right? And if you need to get a drink, you go please. Water, yeah. <clears throat> Usually I have my water in here, but <clears throat> no, I think I'll, I'll be okay. Sure? I'll, I'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, I'll be okay. <clears throat> but I think that's that's important for people to yeah. realize that that's the reason why I never I don't get on board with with that either you know this shit is fun all get together I, you know yeah. pray for peace yeah it's fun at one point but then I'm like okay no well. no not the pray for peace but doing that doing get, like yeah, having I'm, these challenges having these things have play, right, play right. Games, I don't mean praying for peace is fun I mean yeah. this whole, like you know like it I, propels I, you if, it, it does if somebody if all of a sudden the door to escape the matrix was shown to me i don't know if i'd go because you're then like, uh, <laughs> oh you have to sit around all day and like they say in um in a religious thing is to sit around heaven all sit around heaven all day and it's like that is going to be really boring if you sit around all day drinking eat uh, what is it milk and and honey all day long, I, I used to go. Well, there better be a Jenny Craig up there because that's. I, say, I can. I don't need it. I don't need any. I don't need dairy or sugar. So for me, there's nothing to eat. <laughs> I'd be pretty fucking hungry up there. Well, you, you may have to find your way down to hell. <laughs> that's where the party seems. That's to be. right. Yeah. <laughs> ACDC concert. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Randy, you had a question about, uh, you wanted to talk, move yeah. towards talking about just real, Yeah, because we're, I, I just looked over at the clock and realized this has flown by. We're, we're time lords here, so. Yeah, I know. We, I take, we, we take time and we, we compress Bend it. And it and, when they yeah. play this back, it'll actually be two hours, but we've really only been talking for about 25 minutes. <laughs> so just add water. It. We're time um, dilators. But yeah. you, you had, I had, I had heard you address some interesting things about economics and we're we're kind of in this we're in this interesting place right now because mm -hmm. everybody pretty much knows the dollar is over right. and we have this burgeoning cryptocurrency Currency. universe sitting out mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. and i get all of that mm -hmm. but there's a bigger issue and and i'm pissing a lot of people in the crypto communities off because i challenged them mm -hmm. that if all they're doing is going in to make money, they've not created a better system. They simply moved the old system onto a new set of tracks. Well, and, hmm. yeah, I hear I hear what you're saying, but here's here's what I here's what I know. Because um, I didn't pay. People would always email me. I didn't used to pay attention to it, and then I finally stopped and paid attention to it, and kind of just really zoned in on it. But here here's the deal. We know that. Um, it, it definitely was designed, um, with some, yeah, some underhanded, <laughs> some seriously underhanded things there, but at the same time, 
what we have to realize is they, in order to build this system, even if it will ultimately be to their advantage, they must open the door. They have to open the door to make it, to build it, for it to become what it needs to be uh, at some point, whether I don't know how many billions of dollars or whatever. And to what I also understand, what I also understand is that um, much of this is run, it is run by AI that has, does not care anything about the money, but it's about us helping to build this machine. And the only way to get us to build the system is to give us something for it, to give us money, give us something that works for us, that we, we, we need, right? And that's what people, people want is money, right? Which is where the cryptocurrency comes in, Bitcoins and all the various coins. Um, so there is, there is that going on. Now, what I do know is, like everything else, like the crash in the 30s, uh, when people bought up land and people, you know, whatever, people invested in Xerox. And then the, here, here we go with this generational wealth. So what I say to people after looking at this, you have a doorway. I, I am, I'm not opposed to any of this stuff in the game because now I understand it. You have a doorway and you have an opening. Now, if you understand it and you go at this game with a different um, understanding, sure, People have asked me, I'm like, sure, no. And I, I do think so. You go ahead and you do that. Now, if you happen to do that and you end up with, I don't know, you end up with thousands or whatever amount of money you end up with, um, how you apply that and what you do with that um, is up to you. But what, what you must realize is that having that having that opportunity or taking advantage of an opportunity of this this thing that's open at this time um will allow you to probably not be one of those which is going to be the majority of people who are then once again under completely under the thumb of the people who keep regulating the the currency system that counts on the ignorance of people it's the truth they count on the ignorance of people because they know the majority of people will not have any money they cannot have all these people having money because it won't work it will it would eliminate or squash their wealth so you can't have that many people being wealthy so this door i'm being frank with you whatever you do with it this door will be open for a while and you can either decide that you since you're playing a game and that is a game you can approach that game go in on it get the the funds from it and when it closes you have some of that money because if not it's going to do the same thing it always does like every from from salt from when the currency changed you know from when it was salt to to uh, uh what was the other one there's salt and um rice the wampum, the wampum and, shells and yeah yeah and all of that it's the same process that we're dealing with you get a few people that end up with the wealth and the majority has nothing and then you wonder with the, all the criminal activity, where does this generational wealth come from where these people are wealthy five generations into the future? Um, we have to begin to play the game like a game player. If you're playing it like they expect you to play it, you end up with the same, the same, and that's what they're banking on. You have to become a game player and not be personal like that, uh, you know, get personal in that sense. You have to think like, this is the freaking game. All levels of this thing is a game. I am a master game player. How am I going to play this? Otherwise, you'll sit around and you're like, okay, well, this is what they're doing. And they're going to get us to create the same. They're going to do it anyway. Just because enough people are not bright enough and have enough information to make the system collapse. So mm -hmm. here is this system that is there and they're like shoot the only way we can make it happen is we we you know we can't do anything because we need them to help to build this thing walmart's gonna have their own coin all these companies are gonna be having their own cryptocurrency and that's how people are gonna be buying and selling stuff because they you can do it now people are buying things 
um, with, with cryptocurrency. So we have to recognize this technology and this evolution that is happening and real, you know, look at where you are in it and ride the wave of awareness as to the game. Otherwise, you're going to end up being trampled under, hmm. under the game. Hmm. Does that all make sense? It does. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, we, we, you know, we've, uh, we suddenly found ourselves in a conversation about cryptocurrencies, which is, I don't know, a place that we ever, you know, expected to find ourselves, but we ended up, you know, doing a, ser a show with Cliff High and then a series of kind of other talks with people about, mm -hmm. it, and we got really into the many different levels, that, and I'm not sure we're even done with it yet, but we got into the many different levels from the actual technicalities of how it works. Right. Also... The, the blockchain know, and all the, all that. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then also the sort of personal energetics, mm -hmm. some of the metaphysics behind it, some of the, how much of this is about getting people to energetically buy into this system that is, you know what I mean? We got into a, a huge yeah, conversation. You, you can transmute all of that. See, yeah. this is where those limitations come in. When we are, and I get it, when yeah. we are in that place of fight and, um, and you know all of the conspiracies as to what's done to us that's what we keep seeing and so therefore because there's two sides to every coin we don't get to see because we're busy looking at what they're doing to us oh but how can I go in the back door and beat them at their own game all the way through not just with the cryptocurrency with everything right. that here tonight that's what you're doing you're you're learning how to in a way beat the game and you yes, can't no. beat it if you come at it from that standpoint. You will lose every time because of this whole game structure is set up um, to to really keep people in the game yeah. on a on a on a very limited and a lesser level. And even though these people, I understand they think that they are giving information, they're actually also playing into the very game, the very system um that is oppressing. Like Jordan used to say, like every in every game they leave you with a there's always an out. They're, they leave you with a way out every game and they have to tell you what they're doing but if you don't know how to listen to what's being yeah. told to you yeah uh, and i remember when they were telling people basically on the news and stuff about you know the bitcoins don't do it that's because they were going to be yeah. doing it so they're telling you you know, what not to do it's it's not going to be good it's gonna you know so so now all of that change so you have to, you have to be in to see and look at it as a game i used to when i go to conferences when i used to go to some of these conferences like conspiracy con and i'd speak and um and so on um what was profound to me and even when i used to go to common law court when i was you know really trying to understand <laughs> yeah. the sovereignty yeah. stuff what is always fascinating to me is the people that are fighting they're constantly in the fight and they would be broken down they got heart problems. They have health problems. Oh, they have all kinds of issues, and they're doing the fight. This is really kind of, in a way, no different um, yeah. because of something that they're not seeing. All they can see is the fight, but they don't see. If they don't have a body to do this, it matters not. So same thing here. Got yeah. yeah. Got to change it. This is a game, and we've been playing this game on different levels with these same entities on different levels and we're just we're here in this time um playing the game this way with yeah. with them and you have to just feel your master self uh that's kind of basically the bottom line of it wow. yeah no i i actually agree with quite a bit of what you just said there you know what i mean like i don't it's been interesting like i don't there is this whole um <clears throat> there's like this over, uh, abundance of fear from some groups about the cryptocurrencies. And then the, the others, there's this abundance of, oh, well, this is the most important thing in the world. It's going to change everything. And right, the, truth right. is somewhere, the truth is somewhere is not either of those things. It's nope. learning just how to so let it flow. Yeah. I don't, have, I don't have fear about it. Like I have spent a lot of time considering whether it's something that I want to participate in. You know what I mean? From like a more personal and energetic level. But Go I, from your game self. Game Go from self, the yeah. master game self. That's yeah. what you from, your master game self. If not, you're going to be drawing 
um, the decisions from your survival self, because that's what most of those people, they don't know that, but that's where they're coming from is their survival yeah. self because we're, we've been chased by lions and tigers and bears, you know, forever. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's like, you know, we're always like looking out for the next thing that's being done to us. And, and sadly, the, that people like that. And I used to see that at conferences People love that. They come really to hear what's going to be, what's done to them. What's they want to be scared. People like that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, love yeah. it. They don't it's want solutions. Rush. Yeah, you know, it's they don't want solutions. So, it's, it's so many of those people who love all the information and who love to be scared, they're not like, uh, they haven't done it. Like where I really learned to start operating from my game, game self was with my body and with the nutrition. And that taught me how to deal, that helped me to get a hold on all the rest of that information and make it not be so scary. So many of those people who have so much information and love that being scared and want to know the next horrible thing that's going to happen, they refuse to take a look at that. They don't want to hear about that part of it. They don't want to hear about the health shit. Because it's work. They it don't works. want <laughs> to take that level of responsibility yeah. and to do the work. They don't want right. that. So they just want to hear about it. And when I go to Conspiracy that's Con, annoying. Just, <laughs> why yeah. he have me, yeah. I go and I would. I get up there and I know there's some people that got a little bit whatever, but I would tell them that. I'm like, most of you are just here because you just want to hear what's being done to you. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't really want the solutions. You nope. just want to hear that. Yep. And anything else is like, oh, that's over my head. I just want to hear the conspiracy because it's exciting. Yeah. It's fun. Life it's is exciting and fun. Yeah. It's I like watching it. a horror movie when you're little. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's psychic. It's so it's psychic sadomasochism, yeah. basically. It, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's like we let's just tell us all this stuff. Oh my God, it's so exciting. I want to hear about it. Um, but here's some solutions. Well, I don't really want the solutions. I just want to <laughs> yeah. more of the yeah. fun stuff so I can tell nah, I'm them. good. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> I live with my fear and paranoia. Yeah, I like it. I like yeah. it. It's my fear and paranoia. We're friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is, they it always is. come with me. <laughs> it's almost it is. It's like an imaginary pet that people carry around everywhere with them for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, hopefully yeah. it's like Schrodinger's cat and you get to determine whether it's a dead or alive in the box and, <laughs> and they never do. know. And they do, and they get—they they just do. don't know. They get to determine whether it's. Or you open the box, and the cat eats you, and you're dead. <laughs> hey, then that's then that's the journey. <laughs> I'm the ultimate paranoid. Believe me. <laughs> we uh, we've kind of reached the end of two hours, and I I want to. Okay. Uh, Emily, did we cover what you wanted to cover, or do we have? <laughs> No, not, really. like, not yet. Emily's like, no, no, two more <laughs> hours, please. I, no, yeah, no, actually, I think this has been like a really awesome conversation. Yeah, and, uh, we've really enjoyed it. And I, I, you laugh as much as I do. So I know it's really, I, I, I enjoy that. You have, a, you have probably maybe a crazier laugh than I do. So. I do, because everybody always talks about it. They're always like, oh my God, we love your laugh. It's so People tell me I have like, like the cute but evil laugh, like, right? It's like cute and evil yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Yours, yeah, yeah, mine is a little crazier, I think, than yours. Yours, yeah, is yeah, but mine is just like <laughs> whole other weird thing that happens. I know, <laughs> but we I, need that. We look. Hey, you can sit here and have these deep metaphysical. This shit is fucking funny. And dude. we can be all po-faced and funny. serious and sorry. Oh my god! The situation, uh, the situation that we find ourselves in, and the way we deal with it, is actually quite hilarious. And if we get at ourselves, then funny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what we do at the retreats and stuff. That's why we always, it's on the website. When you see testimonials, testimonials from everybody, they go, uh, if you are not ready to do that or that, do not come. Let me just tell you right now. Because we do, we laugh, we'll put videos on, we'll watch JP and we will crack up. We'll laugh about all kinds of stuff. And then we'll go right into the deepest of the deepest conversations. And the laughter just sort of gets everything to to be to flow through that's what people don't realize it's just it makes everything just <clears throat> flow you know? totally if we, yeah. if we, there you if, go. we don't know what anything else what's going to happen going forward and so laughter and enjoying this right yeah. now is what it's actually all about so i love it maybe randy and i will join you for one of your uh yeah in, one of your oh. retreats sometime and and yeah. enjoy the laughing and the goofing around awesome. and, yeah. and the diving yeah. deep and whatever you so will. so sonia yeah. i wouldn't thank you so much for joining thank us you. um I, I've been looking forward to chatting with you and um, I'm glad we did this. Randy, what else do you have to say before we go? Um, well, well, I think this is, uh, I think we need to have you back mm -hmm. next year and uh, reprise some of this and uh, 
maybe add in a few more concepts. It's, it's just been fun talking with somebody that's contrarian enough to come on this show and present something that makes us go, hmm, that's pretty interesting. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's either escape the monkey house or stay and eat bananas. Either way, it's your choice. And uh, the truth is out there. This is Off Planet Radio, Off Planet TV. The website is where offplanetradio.com. I'm going to go off somewhere and just laugh myself into a connection. <laughs> Good night. Hang on a second. Good night.